Uh, but as always, every driver that joins me from h and I'm always very grateful for their time. I love the conversations that we get to have. And I think that today's conversation is a little bit of a hot button, a lot like we talked about electric trucks and uh, various other fuel methods last week. Well, this week, I kind of want to center the conversation with my two guys here on autonomous trucks because uh, we have seen some things in the news about the autonomous truck uh, technology innovation as of late. And I guess I'm just going to start here with a quote for you guys, and then we'll jump in and kind of get your thoughts on this. This quote comes from Glenn Mitchell. He's the head of product management at Mix Telematics. He says, quote, everyone's talking about AI, but it's not really using the machine learning side of AI. We're not talking large language models and all that type of thing, which is what we call generative AI. We're talking about machine learning with pattern recognition, which enables us to predict what's going to happen and allows us to optimize the decisions that humans make around the activities in the fleet. Mitchell also noted that AI for current technologies such as dash cams and routing improves, but new cases will also develop where machine vision is not used only on vehicles, but in the yard as well, for instance, to identify whether a dock is available or tell how much cargo is in the trailer to help optimize trailer loading. Uh, and, and by the way, just for reference, I'm getting this uh, article and these quotes from fleetowner.com if you want to go over there and check that out. Dave, I'm going to start with you here. Uh, what are your sure. thoughts on autonomous trucking? And uh, I guess, tell me how you feel about the fact that there could be uh, driving out there in the lanes next to you, a truck either with or without a driver in it operating itself. What do you think about that? To me, if you're going to have a driver in the truck, the driver in the truck might as well be driving the truck. Okay. And I don't know if, I mean, the way I see cars weave and dodge around us on a daily basis when we are driving the truck, I can't imagine what it's going to be when there's nobody driving it, how the car, how that truck is going to respond to the stupidity of four wheel drivers. The first time somebody gets killed with in one, there's going to be, you know, a big uproar about it. So for sure, especially if the machine is at fault, if it's something that the computer Correct. didn't react to correctly and Correct. It, you bring up such an interesting side of this conversation, and that is, you know, they say that the computer, once it's been learned, once it's trained and, and learned everything that it needs to know, they think that it can actually respond faster than a human can and it can anticipate better than a human can. But I've always really questioned that because unpredictability is it is exactly what it says it is. You just can't know what's going to happen uh, until it happens. It's like the computer um, seeing a bridge pile on and thinking that it's somebody in front of me slowing down and slams my brakes on. <laughs> okay, so you know, a you little know? bit of experience with the driver assistance technologies that doesn't always work Correct. perfect is what you're saying. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. Loris, I want to go to you on this. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts? Technology is what I've seen in the trucks itself with some of the gadgets that we have on there has actually improved in the driving. Now, when we talk about a driverless truck, I I think I've seen actually a couple of them going down into Nevada. Mm -hmm. Now, um, uh, Dave is over on the uh, van side. I'm over at the hopper side. And I know I talked to my wife's uncle about this a few times, and he's an incredibly learned man. He's one of the one of the guys that put big in in D, in, in Dallas, that is, and, and he has. So we, we talk about this because he was uh, – uh, concerned at you know uh, how long I may be here until I get phased out. In the hopper side, I, I don't visualize this for some time. It's because of all the uh, putting in the grain and what have you, and also the, the cost would be almost astronomical uh, uh, because of the farmers and whatever would have to have machinery that would go along with that. Uh, that I'm thinking it, it still would have to be manual or a man. Uh, work uh, to it with the machinery. Now, I, I think uh, machinery and the human touch uh, has to always be in there. Uh, we talked about the legal issues, and I thought about this the other day. Let's say uh, let's say a car slams into a, uh, a vehicle and it kills some people, and uh, you're the nearest of relatives, or you're one that got injured pretty hard, and uh, you're trying to sue the company. Now, it's interesting because I was thinking – 
if you sue the company, they're saying, well, wait a minute, uh, you really can't sue us because it was this one part that mal- malfunctioned and, and uh, uh, we bought this uh, over here and then you try to go after that and you find out it's from a foreign company. And I can really see a nightmare logistics in just to try to uh, even it out. So I don't know if I thought about this a little too deeply, but uh, I just thought that, uh, yeah, this could be a nightmare. I think that is a very interesting part of the conversation as well, Loris, because a lot of uh, the talk behind, you know, autonomous trucks or driverless trucks is you start to think about a labor costs. Of course, that's the one thing that all the fleets are going to look at. But the insurance behind these things is going to be different than any other insurance that we've ever seen, I think, because. Uh, with with your traditional insurance, you're always looking at who's at fault, who did something wrong. Well, if it's not the other driver's fault and there is no second driver, then I guess we have to default to saying it was the computer's fault. And what you're bringing up here is, well, the fleet's going to say, hey, I'm independent of the computer. That was something that this tech company designed. And all of a sudden you start to leapfrog from company to company trying to find someone to take the responsibility. Um the diffusion of that responsibility is, I think, an issue in and of itself that has got to be figured out. And and this is something we talked about a little bit last week with the electric trucks. It's almost like you've got the cart before the horse here. It's great that the technology is at the level that it is and allows us to test these things. But putting them into operation logistically is a whole different ball of wax. And, and I don't think exactly. we've even started to build that ball of wax 